So I was going to start by asking you a little bit about this building. Maybe it's history. It looks like there have there are modern elements to it, but there's also some more classical. So this building was the house of my great great grandfather, who was the founder of Fiat, and uh, he lived here. So this was his uh, private residence, and the idea was to go back to the roots in in his home, build a new building that has been added. So the whole idea of, um, of where we are is really to try and see how the dialogue between the past and the present to build the future works and how as you think about the future you have elements in the past that you want to keep but others that you don't want to keep. Sure. And, and so it's, it's all about trying to find the right balance. What are, what are some of the main concerns or the areas that the foundation is working in? So the foundation has been set up more than 50 years ago to really help and contribute to development of Italy. So today we're the leading foundation in our country on education and it goes from trying to think about how we can improve and make education better, so thinking about it, to effectively making things better. Maybe coming back to the architecture a little bit since you were speaking about this building having been the original home um, of the founder and then modernizing it a little bit. Maybe you can talk about the role of architecture and space. Well, I think the, uh, the building here was very much uh, looked as layers. So the latest uh, was done by a professor, Carlo Ratti, who's professor at MIT who's an architect from Torino, and really working with him, uh, and that was in 2016, on how we could be very uh, sustainable, how this building had very low energy reliance, and not only curating the architectural aspects and its aesthetics, but also in its functionality. We're sitting in front of this beautiful work that seems to be commissioned for your space by Olafur Eliasson, who is quite concerned with uh, environment and all things related to it. How did this come to be? He's been an artist to whom we've been very close and have done works with him. Uh, the idea was really to try and include art and the way we wanted to include art was to make sure that it was also speaking the same language between the past and the future. And uh, Olafur was very compelled by this idea and so the, the artwork that he did is really a window from one building, which is the, the, the founder's home where we are here, to the other building which has been uh, built from scratch. As you are celebrating these milestones in the history of the foundation, as you know, Artissima is also uh, celebrating a milestone. And I was wondering how Artissima has played a role in your life as a collector, as a supporter of contemporary art and the community here. Artissima turns 25 years old, which is, uh, which is uh, a good age. It is a good age. And, uh, and it's been a very important event in Torino. And I think what, what has been a, a strength of Artissima has been the ability to always have novelties in, in having younger artists, artists coming from other, other parts of the world, being able to have at Artissima a place in which they could be exposed with, um, with artists who had already been able to establish themselves as successful artists. And I think that combination is not that common. And Artissima has, has really pulled it off in attracting interesting galleries and established galleries, and in that way having established artists and upcoming artists. Secondly, I think the city has been very open and it has helped both the local galleries but also the community at large to be able during that week to host and organize very interesting activities. And finally, it it is, it is really a fair which has had a, a very large audience, being a fair which is interesting for people who want to know more about art and specifically contemporary art.
I do think that's one of uh, Artissima's uh, very particular special strengths in that the whole city uh, comes together, the, the you know, commercial or non-for-profit institutions all come together to be supportive of the cultural community and Artissima does this labor of not only catering to people in the edu you know, that are collectors but also to a greater community. Yeah, I, th I found interesting to go to Artissima also with my children. So f being here in Turin where we, we live, it's, it's been also a family experience which we've taken a lot of um, joy in and, and also many discoveries that mostly my wife has been doing and, uh, and she always very diligently tries and go very early on to see what, what she likes and then I end up going after where she's already done a lot of the screening. But it's, it's always been a fair where we've discovered something uh, that we did not know. That exploration that we've done as a family has always been very valuable. And there's a good, there, there's a good atmosphere. It's, it's probably less, there's less of a commercial side to it as other ones. And, and people seem to like to come here to, in Torino and, and they all seem to have a good time. I suppose it's because Torino has this rich history and legacy in contemporary art. You have several world-renowned institutions and, and spaces here. So it's, in a way, it's a very unique city that houses art. There are events coming off of Artissima. They're trying to make sure that art and contemporary art is understood in the city by uh, the largest number possible of people. They also try and create a moment where there's also buzz coming out in the city. There is a very strong sense of welcoming that the city provides. Very true. What do you think the next 25 years holds for Turin, for Artissima, for the development of uh, contemporary art? As long as Artissima keeps its edge and keeps its interest. Uh, there'll be interesting opportunities for Artissima to, um, to be able to continue what it has done. And Torino, among its strength, uh, is, is a city which has a lot of art in terms of collector's interest, institution interest, and, and has very much been able to develop that in the past and there's no reason why it wouldn't continue in the future. How does it feel being part of a legacy uh, and a family that art has played such an important role throughout the generations, you know, generations of uh, a family that has been supportive of the arts and appreciative of the arts, I suppose? We have uh, set up uh, a museum which my grandparents set up here in Torino, which is the Pinacoteca Giovanni Marella Agnelli and its aim is on one hand to make sure that parts of the collection my grandparents did is available to the public and sharing that with them, but also having exhibitions which are done every year and a extended program also in, in working with local schools to make sure that as children grow up, they also have an understanding and a sense of what great artists have done, how they've done it, how they thought about it, and through that being able to form them and teach them multiple skills from the actual skills of being creative but also history and other very interesting aspects of it. I think appreciative of the arts is where ultimately it starts. It's, it's an incredible way of learning about us humans because art is a reflection of, of people in society. I think that one of the interesting aspects of, of today's contemporary art is that it's also very much linked to how we live. Having the opportunity of devoting time and spending time on that is, is ultimately a way of understanding better where we live and how we live.